Hi guys, it's Ellen with Gardner Family Farm and I'm just going to go over how two ways that you can roast a whole chicken. One way that uses a frozen bird and one bird that's thawed. Uh, they usually take about two days to unthaw and so I find a lot of times I forgot to take my bird out of the freezer two days before I wanted to use it. Um, so this will just show you how you can still have a great tasting bird even if it's frozen. So for the frozen bird, really simple. All you have to do, um, I use three bay leaves and I'm going to just cut them right in the center. Three bay leaves. This is three stems of thyme. Those are also going to go in. And two cloves of garlic. Everything goes in the center because that way as the bird cooks, it kind of perfumes the meat and infuses all the meat with that flavor as the bird is cooking. So we're gonna take our frozen bird and for roasting, I like to use, um, I use two different things. This is a Dutch oven, a cast iron Dutch oven. Um, and I like this because the lid really locks in the moisture as you're cooking it. Um, and it just really gives you a very moist bird. Um, the other thing I like to use is this, it's just a natural clay roaster. You don't have to use a natural clay roaster. There's other roasters, enamel roasters, um, that you can use as well. But this also seals in the moisture really nicely. Um, if you don't have a roaster or a Dutch oven, you can also use uh, just, a, just a crock pot. And you can put it in at the beginning of the day, turn it on low and let it cook all through the day and it'll be ready in time for supper at like five or six. Okay, so all you do, you put your herbs in, take your bird, stick it in the Dutch oven. And if it doesn't fit all the way right away, that's fine. As it thaws, it'll sink down into the Dutch oven as we go. Literally just stick the lid on. And like I said, this will all readjust in the oven as the bird thaws. Um, and then you're just gonna put your oven at about 350. 350 if you wanna eat within like two to three hours of putting the chicken in. 300 if you wanna eat within about three to four hours of putting your chicken in. So yeah, just however long you have before supper time, plan accordingly. Um, 350 degrees, you're just gonna stick that in the oven and That'll go for, at 350, that's gonna go for about two and a half, three hours um, before it will fall off the bone, which is what I'm going for when I roast a chicken this way. The other way you can do the chicken, and this is if you're, I don't know, feeling a little fancy having company over, um, is I, you can roast it uh, in a pan without a lid. And so this allows you to get some really beautiful brown color on the top of the bird. Um, and the bird just ends up looking really gorgeous. So for this one, we're gonna do the same thing, okay? Three cloves of garlic, three bay leaves, and three sprigs of thyme, okay? The only thing we're gonna add this time is that we're going to add some butter. The reason we're gonna do that is just because it tastes good, but it also helps us get some more color on the bird. And yeah. Okay. Three tablespoons right in the center and then the rest of that stick of butter, we are still going to use it, yes. Um, <laughs> this is gonna go in the pan around the bird, okay? Oh, the other thing that we need to add is some celery. So a single stalk of celery. Hold on, I need to grab the celery. Um, for some reason, this helps the chicken be more moist when it comes out. Because the trouble with roasting a chicken without a lid in a pan um, is that all of the liquid evaporates and you just end up with a little bit more dry bird. 
but this way you add more moisture to the center of the bird as you're cooking it. Okay, I'm gonna put two stalks in because I like the flavor and the smell of celery, especially with chicken, but you can just do it with one. And all of this stuff that we're putting in is just going to help perfume the bird as we're cooking it um, and infuse the meat with some amazing flavor. Okay, now we're going to take our bird. And you know what? I'm going to take the rack out for this because I want it to sit in the juice as it's cooking. So we're going to put the bird there and then you're going to go back for the rest of your butter. around the bird and that will mix with the broth that the bird creates as it's cooking. All right, so then this bird we're also gonna put in the oven at 350 degrees. It's gonna cook for about an hour 45, two hours before it's done. And we're trying to get this bird, we're not waiting till this one falls off the bone. Um, we're gonna cook this bird until the thigh um, right here, which is the part of the bird that takes the longest to cook. Um, when we measure the temperature of the thigh, it'll come out at about 165, 170. And that way we know the bird is completely cooked through, um, but it hasn't become dry and it should still be juicy. Hey guys, so the chickens are done. Um, the first one, the frozen bird has been in the oven for about two and a half hours. And that's all that needed to get completely done. So, so here's the frozen bird. And you can tell it's done because when you, when you lift up on the bones, it just starts to separate. See that? The bone just comes clean of the meat really easily. So you know it's completely cooked through and it's really tender, okay? So there's your frozen bird. And from here, you can chop this up, make sandwiches out of it, uh, serve it with rice, potatoes, whatever you want to fit. And you can use the broth that's in there to make a nice gravy too. Make sure you use it because it tastes really good. The other one, fancier bird, and this is the thawed one. So we've roasted this without the lid, remember? And that's why it's had the chance to develop this really beautiful brown color on top. So this one's not quite done yet. Uh, we've, it's done cooking, but there's still one more step. So to make sure it's done cooking, you just wanna insert a meat thermometer into the thigh and you wanna make sure you don't hit the bone uh, because the bone is just gonna give you an inaccurate reading but you're gonna stick it into the thigh meat because the thigh takes the longest to cook and you're gonna make sure that it gets up to 165 degrees. And this bird's been in the oven for an hour and a half. So it looks like we're in the range there. So the next step is you're gonna take a baster and you're just gonna suck up some of this amazing broth that is formed at the bottom of the pan. And go ahead and just baste that all over the top. This is gonna add some of the moisture back to the bird that it maybe lost while it was cooking and some of the flavor. Plus it, it makes it glisten really super nicely. So it looks nice on a plate. All 
All right, so, oh, from here, all you have to do, you're gonna take a little bit of aluminum foil. And you're just gonna cover the pan. So you're just gonna cover the pan with aluminum foil and you're gonna let it just sit for 30 minutes. It's just gonna rest, it's gonna soak up some of those juices and um, all of the steam is gonna stay inside the pan. And in 30 minutes, this will be ready to cut up, serve and eat. So once this is done sitting for 30 minutes, we'll come back and show you the finished bird. The bird's been sitting for 30 minutes and here we are. So the bird is completely ready to eat at this point. Um, so you can serve it up with your potatoes, your rice. You can make a gravy out of the broth if you want to. Um, but yeah, enjoy.